Okay, you guys, Brandon Mills is here. Brandon, thank you so much for coming on The Snatchler. We have so many questions for you. <laughs> like, not all of them are very nice, That's okay. but, but we tried to weed out all the good ones. But thank you so much for coming. How have you been? How's your quarantine? Um, you know, I realized that when this all started going down that I lived my life pretty much as a quarantine. So it's not been too out of the norm for me. Um, I spent a lot of time alone, writing, reading, uh, meditating, journaling, making music. A lot of these things are done like in a solo perspective. Um, yeah. I get out of nature quite a bit. So the hardest part for me is like not being able to go out to the bars and listen to live music and hang out uh, with people. I do like to do that in the evening. Uh, but it's actually also been really, really healthy too, because it's allowed me to be a lot more like introspective and reflective and yeah. kind of like decide what I'm not going to do moving forward when, when reality gets back to, to the normalcies that we've, we've had prior to this. But yeah, but that was a long winded answer. <laughs> no, I mean, I agree with that. I feel like like this whole time, it's just like a good place to like self-reflect. Also, yeah, I really miss the bars. That's yeah. That's important. Where are you quarantined? I'm in Nashville. Oh, nice. Did you do you live there now? I do. Yeah, yeah. Did you always live there? No, I've I've been a world traveler my whole life, but um, I I most recently moved from New York City. I lived in Manhattan for about five years. Went to school there. Oh. Yeah. Nice. How is Nashville right now? Nashville's cool. I mean, I love this city. Uh, everybody's super humble here. Everybody works hard, plays hard. Um, they're super down home, um, hardworking, humble people. Yeah, it's just, I, I was born in Kentucky. That's where my mom's side of the family still remains. And so I feel like in a way I'm getting back to my roots. I've been running yeah. for so long, yeah. And isn't Nashville starting to open up a bit? Or do I make it that It is. Up? As far as I know, I believe the bars are opening on Monday. If, if they might have already opened soon. That's crazy. Nice. <laughs> That's well, crazy. I can't know, even imagine. I can't even see that in my future right now. Yeah, no. Where are you girls living? We're in Manhattan. We're roommates, but we're not, yeah. we don't, um, we're not together right now because we both went home because we're babies. No, that's so I'm on, I'm on Long Island and Margo's still in the city. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. No, yeah. Spend time with family while, you're, while you can. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. yeah. So true. Okay. I want to get into Listen to Your Heart because we have so many questions for you. A lot of kind of logistical wait. logistical questions, but we'll get to those last because I want to get to the juicier ones first. Um, <laughs> but first, did you know what the show was when you applied? Like, did you apply for Listen to Your Heart or did you apply for The Bachelorette or did you apply for just a show on ABC? Yeah. The way it was kind of pitched to me was uh, this is a dating show with musicians. Uh, single yeah. men and single women are going to get together. You're going to share some dates and you're going to share some music opportunities. And so that sounded really, really appealing to me. That's how it was presented to me. Um, obviously, it was a little different than what yeah. they did pitch, but um, I think they were kind of strategic in that, but that's okay. I mean, yeah. I yeah. I it again in a heartbeat. Oh, you would? Definitely, yeah. Okay. Watching back, do you understand why people have so much backlash against you and the whole Julian Savannah situation and you calling the women sweetie, all that drama? I absolutely understand. Um, I'm taking the criticisms to heart if they're valid. Uh, if they're valid. Like, yeah. This opportunity in the, on the show has been an opportunity for me to self-reflect as well. So I don't, um, you know, if it's done with love, if it's done with compassion and empathy, I'm all, all about it. Not not all of the responses has, have been. Yeah. Um, I do understand why people could react the way that they did. I would also uh, let people know it was about 1% was shown about what actually really happened. So there has to be some uh, liberty and grace with all of that because they're taking the things that are going to emotionally pull us as a viewer and they're kind of throwing that in a very strategic chronological order. To, right, to yeah. And so that's reality TV, and that's okay, but that's not the fullness of the truth, I guess. Right, that's, I figure, that's usually, like, what happens on The Bachelor. That My next question was, do you think you got an accurate edit of what went down in the house? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. I knew what I signed what? up for, and I was willing to, you know, take that risk. Yeah. Is there anything that you wish that they had showed that you think, like, really would have swayed people, like, to understand what was happening? It's not, I don't know. It's a good question. I, I, I'm not responsible for people's reactions. Um, I'm responsible right. for myself. I would have liked to have been um, maybe conveyed in a more honest light. I tried to be really authentic and honest with everybody at that house. And I think if you mm -hmm. were to talk to the 22 other people that I did this, took this adventure with, they would, they would agree that I was authentic. Um, unfortunately, it came across as a little bit disrespectful. Um, it came off 
that I was being a little bit disrespectful, um, maybe not fully honest. And I don't know if that was true. I will take responsibility where I need to. Uh, but that's, again, that's not the fullness of the truth. And um, it would have been a lot cooler if they showed everything that the conversations that Savannah and I had and this conversation right. that Julia and I had um, because it wasn't the fullness. Yeah, it wasn't the full truth. Speaking of which, do you regret going on with Julia and not, not fighting for Savannah? Like, do you have any regrets from that situation that you wish you had done a bit differently? Sure. Uh, that's a great question. Um, here's what I know. <clears throat> I... I, I cared about both women and I know that will even, you know, receive some backlash and that's okay. That was a very compressed distilled uh, portion of time where I never moved that fast with anyone, right. uh, let alone like eight beautiful human beings that I'm being presented with and the opportunity to like kind of lay it all on the line in a very quick uh, pace for anybody. Um, so that being said, uh, I had conversations with Savannah um, that didn't, air. I had conversations with Julia that didn't air. Uh, one example would be on the date uh, that Julia and I went on. I said, listen, my, my heart is with Savannah. I need to go talk to her and see if we can come to come some type of agreement in order to uh, move forward together because I don't think Savannah's heart was fully into it. And I can totally understand why. There's a lot of stress that happens on right. those, those in those programs. And um, you're kind of pulled in a thousand different directions and, and then you're expected to be authentic, which is incredibly challenging. Um, yeah. so I don't think we really had that deep, deep connection that I was looking for that I think Julia presented for me. Um, I'm definitely a words of affirmation and a physical touch kind of guy. If we're okay. going to love languages. Um, I didn't feel that as much with Savannah. So I wanted it to work with Savannah. Um, and then I came home from the date, not fully sober, which was foolish, you know, looking back. Oh, interesting. And, uh, I mean, yeah. I like that. We need to know that. Yeah, well, I mean, it's no excuse. I'll definitely just present it as as what was the truth, but it was no. It's no excuse for how I handled that situation. I definitely did not handle that in the way that I normally would as a gentleman. And so, you know, right. apologies were made to Savannah um, off screen, and and we're good. We're friends, and I still care for her. Uh, Julie and I have had conversations since the show. We still care for one another as well. Uh, there's no bad blood. There's just like, wow, we learned a few lessons the hard way, you know? Yeah, big yeah. time. Yeah. Speaking of which, like, what was the timeline? How long were you there for? I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it. Uh, oh, they are keeping it a secret. We were saying okay, that before. This makes so much sense because I've been <laughs> so confused. It seems like everything is happening so quickly and we're obviously missing something. Yeah. yeah. Like, we I are like... this. say... Uh, it was not as long as, as maybe perceived by the average viewer. That's all I can yeah. say. Sure. I, I okay. think, I think we figured that part okay, out. That's good enough. <laughs> okay. Do you think that similarly, Julia got a bad edit like you did, or was she kind of being as manipulative as she was shown? I, so here's the challenge with this, right? So we, I have my perspective. And then there's 19 other people at the house after the second row ceremony, or sorry, 16 people after, at the house. They all have their own um, perspective. They all have their own opinion. They all have the, what they see. There's so many things that were said on camera in those uh, interviews that I never yeah. heard. So I, did, I wasn't aware, you know? Right, yeah. We were all trying to still figure it out. Uh, I think Julia's an amazing human being. I think she was uh, very emotionally split and was trying to do the best that she possibly could and it's it's really really hard to do that in that situation yeah that's fair do you think that in yours and julia's final performance you purposely held back or do you think that there was just a disconnect and it just didn't work i thought we honestly had a really good performance a really okay. solid performance um it wasn't perfect i think the challenge for us is that every other couple in that house and in, on that stage the second time we performed um had already done that before and right so that first performance was a big like uh connector for for these people these couples like romantically musically um that connection was huge right so that first performance uh was a big thing that helped glue glue these couples together and julia did, and i didn't get to experience that first so that yeah. was a challenge um but no i thought we did a good job and and we were under a lot of stress um because of everything that had happened prior to that and uh, we right. were trying to work it out. I thought I was being as present and authentic as I could. I thought Julia was trying to do the best she could. There was a little bit of a hiccup when Natasha decided to drop that ball, which which surprised right. me because we had already talked about it on the date, but so be it. Um, and then, yeah. Oh, so you, guys, you guys had spoken about this moment with, with the hands over the ears? 
We had talked about it on the date. Yeah. So I was shocked that, oh. that the response was that way. Yeah. But, but again, that was one. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say that was one of the questions. It was like, how didn't you guys speak about that prior? Because it's like, it's not like putting your hands over your ears actually works. Like she definitely heard what you had said. I, you know, I just, all I know is that they create amazing television that, that pulls the audience into an emotional response, but it's not necessarily accurate. Yeah. yeah. Did you really not know the song We Belong by Pat Benatar? Oh, I knew it. I just, I would never have played it ever on purpose. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> not That's my fair. Vibe. And I have no disrespect. Pat's an amazing musician. Um, it just doesn't move me in a way that a lot of other songs do. That's fair. You know, so it's just, the challenge was trying to make that our own. Cause at the end of the day, we were on a, on a competition show. And right. so it's up to me as an artist and a professional to make that something valuable and sexy and beautiful and engaging and and I think we kind of failed in that regard, but uh, it wasn't for a lack of trying. It was just, I think, a lack yeah. of opportunity to prepare, you know? And then speaking of that, how did the song selection go? Like, I know you guys got the cards with the song, but did you have any say in genre, anything to do with, like, the songs that you were given? Nothing. That's so annoying. It's tough. That was challenging. You know, looking back, I was like, it'd be really cool if they gave us two, two songs. Yeah. Maybe different genres or different even, like, decades or generations and then we get to decide because then that puts a little more control in our hands um i wasn't super pleased with either song that i got the opportunity to sing um but that's how it goes with competition right so we're there's there's a little bit that's always out of our hands and um, yeah again looking back you know you just try to make the best of the situation and, and do the best you can with what you have right that's fair i can't believe you guys don't get any say that's so wild i really thought you did it was a challenge no i, <laughs> I <never laughs> Never would have picked those songs. First yeah. Okay. Did you know that Mel was in love with you or were you genuinely shocked? Mm, these are some great questions. Thank you. Honestly, <laughs> I can't, we can't take credit for it. Our listeners, these were their questions. Cool. Okay. Um, I knew Mel had feelings for me. I thought okay. Mel was an amazing human being. And again, we're pressed into this like uh, forced decision making really quickly. Um, had this situation been in real life, you know, maybe there were like two or three girls that were interested in me. I could have spent time with each of them going on dates through like a few course of a few weeks to figure out what, what's real and what's not. Maybe what, I think a lot of people mistake love for infatuation. I think that's a pretty common thing. And so I, yeah. I think, I think Mel's an amazing human being. We're still friends as well. Um, I didn't know that she felt that way about me and, and I, and I care for her, but I think she waited a little too long to let those emotions be um, made known to me. So that was the challenge for me. I'm like, yeah, you had some time to do to tell me about all this. And I'm just hearing about it right now. So that was the tough part for me. It kind of felt like a last ditch effort for her to stay because she knew she was going to go home. But you had other people. Yeah, to give that's your a question. I didn't know. I don't know if she necessarily did it like, you know, last ditch effort. I think she was still working through her her courage to build up uh, to build up the courage to like say that to me yeah it just unfortunately took a little bit too too long i think in my in my opinion yeah yeah okay speaking of that do you keep in touch with any of the contestants i'm in touch with almost all of them yeah do you guys have a group chat yeah does it like pop off every monday night um it had initially it's kind of like fizzled out we've kind of you know, we're all, it's a lot. It's a lot. It was a, it was a lot to be on the show. It's a lot to see it back, especially, yeah. you know, if you're in the villain situation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, we're all still connecting. Um, I reach out to the people I, you know, I meditate all the time. When people come up in my mind when I'm meditating. If I think about them through meditation, I usually send them a text, you know, thinking about you, love you, blah, blah, blah. So we're yeah. still connected very much. So I'm sure more, some more than others, but uh, I do everything I can to like stay stay in touch with all of them. They're so cool. They're such yeah. good, good people for sure. Yeah. They like, everyone seems like such good friends on the show. Everyone's always holding hands. Yeah. That was the craziest yeah. part. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's like, ever obs obsessed with each other. Yeah. I was, I was uh, rooting for everyone. Like the coolest part about losing in that show is I was just so excited for everybody else that moved on. Oh, that's, that's actually really That's sweet. a good feeling. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool. It was cool. You can't use that word anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Were you starstruck, and if so, by which judges? Mm, great question. Starstruck? No. Incredibly, like excited. Yes. Um, 
I've been around a lot. I've had, I've been fortunate enough to be around a lot of celebrities and there's, that's not a brag at all. It's just like, I've learned throughout my life as I get older and as I experience these people, they're so human and they want to be treated normally. So I said all that to say they, they didn't like, I wasn't uh, speechless, but I was very uh, appreciative. Like I got to at least hug Jason Mraz, which was cool. He's been a, that's cool. guy for a long time. Yeah. Kesha, I thought had some of the most beautiful, like feminine energy I've ever felt in my life just being around her I just feel this like unbelievable power and strength and like humility and groundedness um Tony Braxton same thing she just owned the room everybody just felt that like dynamic powerful energy uh Andy Grammer same thing yeah they were all cool um I say I guess if if one of them uh influenced me the most it w- in my life it'd be Jason Mraz because I yeah. definitely have a stylistic uh, musical approach similar to what he has and he's influenced that uh, in me yeah what couple did you think was the best match and what couple did you know wouldn't work out mm. damn these questions yep <laughs> all right um so uh becca and i became very close on on camera or on the show and then afterwards um i knew she cared deeply for danny but i never felt like there was a deep deep like uh, romantic chemistry there and that obviously was displayed um on the show uh who i thought you know i love chris so much chris is just such a grounded dude and i you know in so many ways am still uh appreciating his response to all of this because he just always held it down he was always cool yeah. calm, collected and strong and looking back i probably should have you know spent more time <laughs> <hanging out laughs> with him to help get that groundedness in it. So him him and Bree just had this connection, I believe like the first or second night that was really powerful. And I think they were kind of like do or die immediately. And I think that's really beautiful. That's not how every relationship works out, obviously, but um, there's some beauty to that. I felt like they held it down in a really, in a really uh, strong way. Yeah. Uh, I also love Trevor and Jamie. They're, they're phenomenal. I love both oh. of them too. I don't know. I love everybody. I'm just yeah. I'm just, you're too yeah. nice. You're being too nice. Um, okay. Obviously, you can't tell us what happens, but are any couples still together, like Ryan and Natasha? I can't talk about that. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> Was there a plan to have a listen to your heart reunion of sorts before, like the whole pandemic? There was a talk about that. Yeah, like uh, I believe I've never seen a Bachelor show in my life. Um, this is the you first you haven't time. never no. No. So when all of those bachelor couples were coming out, you had no idea who they were. No, no, That's amazing. I had the, the girl character. And she'd be like, oh my God, it's this and this. And I'm like, cool, cool, cool. Who are they? Oh my uh, God. Yeah. So I was learning a lot while I was on that uh, show. It was cool. I don't, I don't regret any of it. Um, remind me what you asked me again. I'm sorry. I said um, reunion. No, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there was, there was talk of a reunion, uh, like a and I think. Is that kind of how it goes? The end, end of the season? Yeah, it's like um, after the final rose. It's like it's like a tell all of everyone comes together and talks about yes. it. I believe they were setting that up. That was the plan. Yeah, which I was super excited for because yeah. the first, the my first response to the first episode was just, oh my god, I miss these guys so much. Oh, you know, they're all so cool. And I was like, yeah. oh, you know, it's just to so you so we film and then months go by where it's it's just kind of dissolves and then when you watch it again you're just like oh shit that was such a good time yeah then you're back in it right right right, exactly would you ever go on paradise bachelor in paradise have you heard of it i would love to go to paradise <laughs> okay uh, yes i would be i would be completely open to that yeah absolutely yeah i feel like you would like thrive on paradise why do you say that I don't know. You just would no, like. Sure. I'm just. I'm just getting that <laughs> you vibe. You just would. <laughs> you just would. Um, did producers play a large role in the show like they normally do? I know you didn't didn't watch the Bachelor and shows like that, but they normally like their hands are in there. But I feel like they've been kind of they were hands off a little bit during the show, like telling people who to choose. Mm. <laughs> Maybe I'm gonna, not. I'm choose my words very wisely. Uh, you can play the fifth. There were a lot of people on set that were encouraging us to go and pursue people and conversations and interactions. And uh, yeah, they did a really good job at that. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Sounds like them. <laughs> okay, what is one person besides Julie and Savannah that you would have liked to do a duet with? Hmm, are we talking about strictly musically? Uh, yeah. Does it have to be a romantic connection? Uh, I'm a huge fan of Brie and Rudy, their voices. 
are just Rudy. like showstoppers. I'm just like, good lord, yeah. Rudy's voice, her rendition of "Shallow" with Matt was like one of the best covers of "Shallow" I've ever heard. I just watched it like an hour or two ago, and I was just like almost in tears. I'm like, good lord, I'm so glad I know these people. <laughs> no, oh my god, it's so good. What are your thoughts on Matt and Rudy and like that whole situation of him just kind of being like iffy? And she's I applaud in. Matt because he was authentic, you know, and that's the hard part about this. Like being authentic doesn't always look sexy in these in these in these uh, shows because they're kind of forcing you to react a certain way. And if you're just like, I'm not sure if I am able to do that this quickly, then you kind of look like a bad guy. So uh, I love Matt. He's one of my best friends. Um, I love Rudy, too. She's a beautiful human being. I want them to work it out as they see fit and not yeah. as like somebody expects them to or demands them to, because that's just never going to work. Uh, and like, there's going to be no longevity of that if you're forced into something you don't, you're not ready for. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. Yeah. We were actually saying that before that like, it doesn't necessarily, like they're so good together musically, like it doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic situation, but it could be, right. but the forcing it is just making it harder. But it's so good. You just want to, you're like rooting for him. I was watching it today and I'm just like, the sad like violin gets played as Rudy is speaking. They're just they're just amazing. It, it, they were it was so phenomenal. Okay, yeah. who are some people, if any, from Bachelor Nation that have slid into your DMs? <laughs> <laughs> um, a few, but nobody I could like name off the top of my head. I, again, okay. I'm so far removed from the show. Um, I honestly wish I would have done a little homework prior to. I kind of wanted to go in like blank slate, virgin eyes and ears to all of this. Uh, I think maybe it did me a disservice. Uh, but yeah, shout out to any Bachelor Nation people that want to get to know me. I'm, I try to respond to everybody as long as it's not super mean and cruel. Um, yeah, don't bother. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> trying to build a relationship from somebody who slips into my DM. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. completely fair. Okay, we will let you go soon because I feel like we have been interrogating you. you However, great. Our last question is the same when we ask all of our guests. Every week we say our snaps or songs, songs that we're listening to. We have a playlist on Spotify. So what are you currently listening to or what you want people to be listening to? Just what you like. Yeah, um, I'm a huge fan of this band called Kaleo, K-A-L-E-O. Uh, they're out of Iceland. Um, they're phenomenal. He has a voice that I'd like to replicate. Um, who else am I listening to? This is a great question. Let me pull up my... Spotify recently played this old. Oh, yeah. I'm listening to this guy named Finley Quay, who kind of like got out. He was in the limelight, like probably in the 90s or early 2000s. It kind of fell out. But somebody told me my voice reminded me of him. And it just was one of the biggest compliments. Um, oh. I'm always listening to people like Citizen Co, uh, Van Morrison, Gregory Eisen, Alec, uh, Gregory Allen Isakoff. I like a lot of folk music. I like, I like to get moved deeply uh, by by simplistic um, music and then really powerful voices and powerful storytelling, so. Nice. Yeah. Well, we're, we always wanna listen to new music because we are obsessed with music. And speaking yeah, of music, you have now. a new single coming out, I right? Do. I do, yeah. So it's available for pre-save. It's a song called Glistening that I wrote when I was living in Bethlehem. I was working for the Palestinian re refugee camps out there. And I just, I was celibate at the time. I wasn't trying to date anybody, but obviously, you're a man in your like mid 20s, you have like this urge to want to be with a partner, right? So right. I kind of wrote it, the idea of like what a perfect uh, relationship would look like. So yeah, it's called Glistening. Um, it's available available for pre-save on all the uh, streaming platforms and it'll be out May 29th. Awesome. Okay. Well, we can't wait to listen to it. Thank you so much for coming on the Snaps. Or you really have to say you redeemed yourself in my eyes fully. Like I just, I understand you a lot more now. So I think that a lot of people will very much appreciate this interview. So thank you so much. I hope you, you stay safe. Stay. I got healthy. one question for you, real quick, Margo. Oh God. Okay. No, it's gonna be nice and easy. I promise. Okay. You have, you have you are one of three sisters that are doing this influencer thing, right? Right. Which I think it's really beautiful because I have two brothers and my two best friends. I would love your advice on how do you keep those relationships healthy? What's the most important thing about those relationships for you? What do you prioritize? With my siblings? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I feel like it's because we're doing this together, it makes it easier to keep that because it's like we're all in this together. So like cool. I, if I need advice or I need them to help me shoot content or I just need tips and tricks, like I'll go to them. So I think I wouldn't really be able to even do what I'm doing if it wasn't for them. So I think to have 
family who's doing it too is so special because not everybody has that. So I think it's something that you should lean into. Cool. I love that. So you're saying I should get my two brothers to go on a reality TV show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I'll take it. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was, right, it was really nice to meet both of you. You too. Thank you. So nice Peace to meet out. you. All right.